is Nicole. I'm a tea writer and educator, and I'm here to help you learn more about tea. I've been wanting to do some deeper dives into my favorite teas, so I'm going to kick this series off with Oriental Beauty. Um, it's one of my favorite oolongs, um, and I'm excited to share more about it with you. Um, so first, I'm going to zoom in on these beautiful leaves. This tea is commonly sold as, under the name Oriental Beauty. You may also see it called Dong Feng Mei Ren. Uh, five color oolong, bai hao oolong, uh, which means white tip. So looking at these leaves, it's easy to see where all of these names come from. The leaves are definitely beautiful. There's lots of different colors ranging from browns to blacks. Um, and then you have the silvery tips in there. There's a lot of different stories about how this tea got its name. Some say it was from Queen Victoria. Some say it was Queen Elizabeth. I haven't found any real proof of those actually being true. Um, I do think that it was probably just some enterprising tea seller who thought that that sounded like a good name. Now, there's a few things that set this tea apart from other oolongs, especially ones from Taiwan, if you're familiar with them. Typically, they're more of like the rolled style, more green, very, very different from this tea's appearance. Part of that is that this tea is grown at lower altitude, about 300 to 500 meters. Most higher end teas are harvested in the spring, but this one is actually harvested in the summer. Um, and there's a very specific reason for that. The leaves that are used to make this tea are allowed to be bitten by bugs before harvesting. I know that might sound gross, but trust me, it's what makes this tea delicious. This is a leafhopper insect. Uh, they're more active during the summer months. There are compounds called terpenes that are released within the leaves that create a honey-like taste that you would not get otherwise. Be thankful for those little green guys because they're part of what makes this tea so special. Oriental Beauty typically has higher oxidation, generally about 70 to 80%, so that's why the leaves are fairly dark in color. It's not roasted though, so that also sets it apart from most other oolongs. One thing I often see is tea sellers marketing Oriental Beauty as being a chemical-free tea because the theory is that those little leaf hoppers wouldn't be around if there were pesticides being used. I definitely wish they would stop doing that because it is a bit disingenuous. Um, really, the pesticides are applied in the early spring um, to those same fields. They're not necessarily applied in the summer because they want to encourage the leaf hoppers to be in the field and nibble on those leaves. It's not necessarily true that there's no pesticides used at all. So what is the best way to brew Oriental Beauty Oolong? I personally prefer Gong Fu style. Um, I've got about six grams of leaves in my Gaiwan. Um, the water I recommend doing just a little bit under boiling, so mine's about 195. Um, it doesn't really need rinsing because the leaves aren't rolled tightly. Um, so I let it brew for about 30 seconds. Once you're ready to pour, you want to make sure your gaiwan lid opening is fairly small. Um, you can also use a filter like this one, um, but the leaf pieces are fairly small, so you want to make sure that you're going to catch all of those. Go ahead and give your gaiwan lid a, sn a sniff. Um, you definitely get a lot of the aromas of the tea lingering on the gaiwan lid after brewing. So I'm picking up like Floral notes like roses, but also a little bit fruity. Um, it almost reminds me of white grapes. I mean, you can see the liqueur is like a really beautiful kind of gold color. Um, it might be hard to pick up on camera, but I can see lots of trichomes floating in there. Um, those are the little hairs from the white tips uh, that we saw in the dry leaves. You can definitely also brew this tea in more of a Western fashion if you'd like. Um, typically I'll use about the same water temperature, about 195 degrees Fahrenheit, and then brew them for about three minutes. In that case, I'll use about one and a half to two teaspoons of leaves for every eight ounces of water. Um, so what does Oriental Beauty taste like? Even before I drink this tea, um, all of those terpenes from our friends the leaf hopper comes through in the aroma. Um, you definitely got a lot of honey notes. I know we've talked about this a bit on Husband Tea Torture. Don't be afraid to slurp your tea. It actually helps you taste. Um, as long as you're not being rude to anyone around you, then it's perfectly fine to do. Um, so the taste is really smooth and sweet. There's no bitterness at all. It 
Swishing the tea around in your mouth also helps uh, to kind of make sure that you're hitting all of your taste buds. The finish is a little dry, but not in a bad way. It almost reminds me of white wine, um, where it just has like a crispness to it that I really enjoy. There's notes of peach as well as a muscatel kind of taste that reminds me a lot of Darjeeling. And that's no coincidence. A lot of people don't realize that Darjeeling tea is also bug bitten. Um, so they have those terpenes in common. And especially because this is an oolong tea, make sure that you're doing more than one infusion because this tea absolutely can be brewed many times over. Let me know in the comments what your favorite way to brew this tea is. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next week.